Well, now, here we are. After the good result of the P30 manifold, I mean, people might think that I'm against the Type R, but I'm not. We just simply made the P30 perform better. And this one, Zef sent me his intake manifold for some port work. And this is a P73 Type R manifold. So now, we can actually discuss what we did before with the dyno and calculate the runner length like we did with the P30 and compare both manifolds ported and also show you the dyno of each engine both a B18 but one ran a P30 the other an ITR manifold <laughs> They sent me this manifold and we're going to show you what we do with it when we port it. And their group is Lenao Carrerista. It's an informal group because it's more like it comprises of different car members or different members from different clubs just to be more united. Kind of like East versus West in the US. But his actual team is Illegan City Car Club. That's a pretty good logo, right? Okay, so now let's go. Okay, now something for a little different. We're going to unbox this. It's, it's actually something I find really fun. Unboxing shipments of the work that we got to do. It simply means just more work or new work, right? All right, we're going to open this now. And there. All right, now we're going to cut this plenum and show you. Before we start hitting it with the carbide and then the 80 grit, all right? Oh, there you go. All right, now you can see the plenum and the runner entry in stock form. And let's look at this angle because we're going to check this out once it's done on the same angle. Now let's get to the porting bench. We actually flared this before setting up the camera because it was kind of hard to have the camera up top while we contour all the runner entry. So we had to do it beforehand. So now we're going to start tapering it, you know, or increasing the entry. So that to speed it up because it gets boring, you know, if it's too slow. All right. The good thing with an OEM manifold is that the the quality of the aluminum is really really good and as you can see as we pass by with a carbide the aluminum quality is actually good you know the the mix of the alloy so hey honda is honda i guess you know so here we still use the atf and mineral spirits lubricant this way it cuts really well Right after this, we're going to show you how it looks with the carbide cut freshly from the working bench. All right, let's go. So after spraying it with water, here we are. Oh, it's, it's starting to look really good, right? And if you notice, I mean, with the key, the keen eye would notice the way we flared the entry, we started in steps. This way, we, the consistency is really good. Now, before we go back to the 80 grit, we're going to show you the before and after. As usual, we do that in every single manifold or head that we do. So here you go. Now, let's go to the porting bench. And as usual, we spray it with our ethyl alcohol and soapy water mix before we hit the 80 grit. All right. We actually flared it smooth, so you know you're gonna see it really good. All right, there you, you can actually start to feel the lumps, so you can go back and forth with it to get it smooth. And as usual, let's time lapse. You know, it is not uncommon to smooth it out with an 80 grit, and then suddenly you start start to notice some areas that you gotta use the carbide once again and that's fine you know just go back to it and then you can get all the shape that you need you know that you need to do or achieve you know all right here see we're we're starting to pour the initial inch this way it's gonna be more taper consistently all right once we get the initial inch consistent now we're gonna go even further into the runner and this way the gradual taper is going to be consistent because you can start all the way inside and then go back and forth but 
you know it has to be consistently gradual papering you know it cannot be uh different sizes and, and different areas so this is what we do and others probably can do it in a different way but hey this is what works for me it's all right okay now here we're gonna show you how it looks like see we're just halfway through right but you can see the consistency is gonna be really good now all right now let's go back with a carbide once again and i mean with the sanding roll right okay then we speed it up you know if you've noticed that we always emphasize on the taper because initial taper or increased taper compensates for the length this is kind of like the exhaust you know instead of sh having a long exhaust you can run a shorter but with a megaphone which is a, a taper in reverse right so it's a megaphone and the reverse cone but see let me show you why it's important as we know the runner length is seven inches so let's calculate it and then let's reference the dyno sheets that we have of the engines that we did before and then this manifold we hit it with a power spray and then show you on the bench later or after and you remember on the p30 video we measured the runners it's seven inches so it's total 10.5 inches runner length from the valve to the opening and this is the calculation third harmonic is 8.8 8 to 10,000. and so do you remember when we show you the dyno sheet of this b16 with the p30 manifold if you run the idr it starts at 8.8 8, and then 10,000 is just too high, right? But when you think about it, with the right setup, look at this. The B20 VTEC 1UP piston that we did before, it's 224 wheel horsepower. Look at the graph. From 8.8 8 onward, it's not going down. Normally, this is how the power band is, right? It just, after peak power, it starts tapering down, right? But remember the rotor length is from 8.8 8 to 10,000 the third harmonic look 8.8 8, all the way to 10,000 that is why the power is trying to go up even torque this is the b18 that we did a while ago look it's almost until 10,000 there's still power right and for those who know how to drive well you know this would run really fast this actually runs 13.4 and it's a b18 four door crazy right now let me talk about the importance of taper. When you think about it, taper is like a funnel. So the better taper that you impose, the more momentum the intake has, which is called charge momentum. So when imagine when the piston is going up, because of the momentum being good, it's still gonna keep filling the chamber. This is what gets your efficiency above 100%. It's difficult, but it's definitely possible. And if you get to do that, that's like you're running maybe 0.5 boost. That's power, you know? And look, here's a dyno of a B16 that Bong did of H3 Autoworks. And I want to show you some details on it. Are you ready? All right, let's go. Now, this is the B16 with PCT Type R pistons. And you notice the good stuff on the curve, right? And also, remember the rudder length from 8.8 8 to 10,000. Look, this is why peak power was up there, even the torque, right? This is why it was fast. This was actually built for a grudge race, the infamous street race. And this was the one of the first, or actually the first manifold I've ported. And this, the taper to get this, we actually had extensive welds at the bottom because we kept going through. That was that much taper this actually ran 12.7 with just the street tires and pump gas you know anyone that goes fast like that today not much right that was h3 autoworks back in 2008 and i'll always be part of h3 autoworks that was the first team and the only team i've ever been in and you notice this on the dyno at 7.2 look between 7.2 all the way to 8.2 it jumps in power so it's in a in a range of 1000 rpm it starts from 140 wheel horsepower all the way to 178 wheel horsepower that's 38 wheel horsepower in 1000 rpm range that's crazy and this is just a B16A with the Skunk 2 Tuner 2 cams, or locally S2S2. So before you complain about low compression, come on, think about it. 
Now let's head back to the workbench or the porting bench. With all this taper talk, it got me more excited in finishing this, making it extremely efficient as possible. Let's go. Sorry, apparently it's already in the wash basin. So we washed it up and then made another run with a sanding roll to get the contours really good. And now here we are, all finished and ready to show you. Oh, look at that. It looks really good, right? And if you can you can visualize it. It actually resembles a velocity stack. Each runner, of course. You see the contours and also the divider just, you know, ended up being how it is because of the flaring that we did. You know, at this angle, you can see that's a velocity stack. And this is going to be really, really efficient. You can tell. And remember, we did the P30 manifold video. It has the benefits of the RPM. If you need it on the mid range or whatnot, look at this. We found this dyno that we did before. This is a B18 LS that we did years ago. It has P30 pistons and just CTR cams. Look, from 75 to 85, the peak is good. And this is the same engine or a similar engine actually, but with the ITR manifold, but not ported, right? You can see where a specific setup will shine when it's a p30 manifold or how are you going to work around it if you have a p30 manifold and at the same time if you have an itr manifold like this you get to choose your setup that will actually shine up in the high rpms now that's proper engine building and it has less risk in making low power or disappointments on the dyno unlike we know most places do right and remember we took a video of this in stock form before porting or before starting with the carbide and here look the finished product and you can see it's gone to a shape that's really really good you know okay and we got a surprise for you guys just to show you the contours and the work that's been you know done unlike others who'll just show you a cool picture like this and then that's it not show you the details but that's not us here we give you another one we put a electric tape on runner four three and two just to show you the contours of how it gets and this is runner one and two you can see the curves are really good and you remember the p30 video we showed this or we talked about it let me show you here now with an electric tape to show you the contour on the runner four toward the throttle i don't see any corner even in this angle right you see a lot of people just do this it looks good from the outside or from the front and this ain't even a secret it's just showing the capabilities of your work right so how come they don't what gives and here's another view from the flange side towards the head and yes light don't lie you can see the curves and you can see you notice the taper towards nearer the head we don't pour it as much because if you increase the size then it's not going to be tapered right or it's not going to be tapered so hey it's not going to be flowing efficiently and here now let's compare this the p30 intake manifold in stock form it has an entry of 42 millimeter wide and 47 millimeter high or tall right and that's roughly by the way now let's go to the itr and the itr is 48 millimeter wide and 53 millimeter tall that's a significant difference right and this would let you choose or figure out your setup and application needed you know it could be cams or compression or even the headers whichever works for the system that's how engine building is it's all about the combination and once again, we'll do you another one. We put an electric tape again on the top so you can see how it is with and without. And you can see that's actually a velocity stack. And you can see the curve is consistent. And that's all by hand. I didn't even trace it and whatnot. And you know, we got proof that more taper is actually better. This is the finest example, Skunk 2 Ultra Street. They actually made an even better taper and also the runner length is really good. It's actually around 9 inches too, like a P30, but bigger than the ITR. So hey, you get the best of both worlds, right? Funny thing is, you can still actually improve this by porting it with an even better flaring on the entry. Now let's go back to the manifold. 
and you can see it's really good, right? This is gonna be up and ready to make tremendous power and good RPMs. So we're gonna off, then we're gonna get it on to weld the plenum and it's gonna be ready to rock and roll.